I don't even have to tell longtime region rats where this location is. They'll know. My mother knows what this location is, doesn't even need a description. Hey, greetings everyone. Sam Love in the Calumet Wilderness. Happy Halloween week. Samhain, Dia de los Muertos, whatever it is you're celebrating. The reason for the season, eh? Look at this. Bootleg old school Misfits t-shirt. This thing's older than some of you. I guarantee that. All right, so I asked you, what are some of the eeriest places that you know in the region? And very quickly, my dear friend, Comrade JVV pointed out Reader Road. For those of you that are not from around here, I'm on Reader Road, which is probably the most notorious haunted haunted road out here in Northwest Indiana. Did I just betray some belief or lack thereof? I'll just say the burden of proof falls on you, not me, okay? Everything I say is gonna be backed up by history today. Well, the first part of Reader Road when you're headed east from Griffith is uh, still an active road. Some houses, some contracting businesses. So not particularly eerie. I'm sure those people just love ghost hunters rolling through at night, hanging around and being weird. Well, I'm on the trail into Oak Ridge Park now. So Reader Road actually continues on that way. I see a home back there, it just dead ends. And then to my right is a barbed wire fence with a bunch of no trespassing, don't video record this, you're being videoed. I'm not even gonna bother. We got a good amount of rain last night, so it's surprisingly lush out here for late October. Oh, this train had been blocking the path here and they got all kinds of signs that say don't you dare hop over our our equipment here so i turned around and you know lo and behold the thing starts moving so we'll see what happens So there's old Reader Road continuing on to the left there. Uh, here's where things get eerie. I've heard about the, the lore of Reader Road probably all my life, you know, I mean, at least since elementary school. It, uh, it was midway between where I lived growing up and my grandparents' house, so we'd come back this way quite often. I found it really attractive. There's a big wetland just beyond Nicholson Road, and, you know, you come out coming from the north and uh, Hendrick Street, just all this open land before you, so. Kind of, it felt like, you know, you were going out in the middle of nowhere even though it's just beyond the borders of a, you know, heavily industrialized, urbanized area. My 
Well, here's the Maryville end of it. Let's call it 58th here. And then you might see some traffic just beyond those dumpsters. It's Hendricks Street, which then curves to the uh, northeast called Nicholson Road there. So when I was a kid, there was a uh, metal gate. You could drive in a little bit on 58th, but there was a metal gate. You couldn't go beyond that. It was super rutted and just generally creepy. Yeah, lots of stuff if you Google Reader Road online. In fact, this won't even be the only uh, video uploaded to YouTube about Reader Road this month. I think it's really cool that the, uh, the legend endures, you know? And hopefully it's one that will continue to endure. I don't know. I mean, they've made part of it, the Griffith side, into a bike path. And, you know, you've got Oak Ridge County Park here. So it might just get sort of forgotten about. But maybe not, you know. People putting it online keep talking about it. Lots of websites. Uh, a couple of books mention Reader Road. Yeah, there's been some newspaper articles over the year as well. So... Shall we separate a little fact from fiction? I guess the first fact would be the spelling of the road. Most people spell it R-E-E-D-E-R, -E 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 but it's actually spelled R-E-D-E-R, -E -E as you've seen on all the street signs out here and maps. Uh, sometimes you see it spelled R-E-D-A-R, -E but it is named after a early farming family out here who arrived in the 1850s. And they spelled it R-E-D-E-R -E -E in all the records. I've never had any odd encounters out here, and I've been coming out here since I was old enough to drive. Which is scary to think that was almost three decades ago. But it's definitely a trail where I'm always looking over my shoulder. Yeah, yeah we'd come up Hendrix and then pull into a 58th and, you know, turn the lights off and see what we could see. So, never saw anything out here myself uh, of the supernatural variety. Lots and lots of plants and birds and insects, though. Very, uh, very beautiful area out here. I know I say that about all of them, but it's true. Oh, it's also one of those trails where I'll see something up ahead and play the game of, is it a stump or is it human? Usually it's a stump. I remember a friend of mine, this probably was junior high school, a friend of mine saying he tried walking back here from the Maryville side in and he uh, saw some old coot sitting on a porch with a shotgun cackling. So I don't think that's true, but it's a good story. I can't recall any specific stories from that period about like ghosts or apparitions or anything like that. The uh, the most often told one is about a young woman named Elizabeth Wilson who died. And then decades later, I mean, sometimes it's the 70s, sometimes it's the 80s. But in that period, a young man was rushing to get home and picked up this young woman in distress. And she had him uh, backtrack a little bit, go up by Ross Cemetery where she disappeared. So there are a couple of different tellings available of the story yeah, in books and then repeated online. I think it's always fun to look at how the details change and how tales get accredited, you know, to whom, if anyone at all, or is it just, well, people say, or, you know, some kind of write-off like that. Still an active work road for Lake County Parks Department. I've come across many stories about, you know, bodies and body parts being found out here. The place was a dumping ground for mobsters back in the days. I've not seen any newspaper articles. I've not done that research, so, I mean, it would make sense, right? Well, there's also a story about a church where the pastor went crazy and poisoned his uh, parishioners. And uh, I've seen a lot of folks commenting, though, that, you know, there's no record of a church being out there. And there's discrepancies in the tales about where the church was located. But, yeah, people have said they've, you know, heard screaming out here. I hear the screaming of birds. I 
There's a great old map from the 1870s called Hardesty Sectional Map, and it uses the public land system. So it's great, you can actually pinpoint locations over time. We can take a look at this map here, and there's our road. I don't know if it was called Reader Road at the time, but you can see Hendricks going north-south. You can see Nicholson Road making that angled turn towards the northeast. And then right there, going west, is our road. If you go all the way to the end, you can see the property of a J.J. Reader. I'm assuming that's a descendant of the Peter Reader, who was the early settler and farmer out this way in the 1850s. So this is one of the oldest roads out here in the region. You know, considering that most of the region really didn't develop until the early 20th century, here we've got evidence from the 1870s saying there was a road here, or one was being planned, right? Because the map's not always the territory. There's an even older map from the 1840s done by none other than Solon Robinson, who founded Crown Point, that can give us some clue about what the ecosystems were like here before it was all developed for agriculture. So we can see, again, right in this section, looks like it would have been a heavily wooded area um, with wetlands in between. You know, the whole area to the west, Highland and Munster, south of Ridge Road was very swampy. So this would have been the edge of that. Katie Marsh Ditch, which goes all the way into Gary uh, in Glen Park, would have drained a lot of this. You had smaller drainage as well leaving us this hodgepodge that we can enjoy out here today on this here trail. All right, that's a bit odd. What a lovely catalpa tree. Yeah, I found a lucky penny, Lincoln side up. Maybe Reader Road's good luck for me. Well, I've made it back safely. It was about four and a half miles there and back. No orbs, screams, moans, nothing. There's an old man on a bicycle singing. But frankly, more of us should be doing that. So, hey, thanks for coming along with this eerie adventure in the Calumet Wilderness. Please hit like, leave a comment, subscribe, share with your friends, all that. See you on the next adventure. Take care. Bye.